What's up, guys? Welcome back to COVID Cleansing. So, in this video, I'm going to be doing a simple introduction to the new series on this channel that will be starting in a few days' time. So, we are going to be building a RESTful API for an e commerce web application from scratch. You understand? So, before, before we start that series, you understand? I want to introduce you to what an API is. I want, to, I want to make you know what makes an API to be RESTful. You understand? So, I'm going to do all that in this video. And so, in the next video, we are going to start building a RESTful API for an e-commerce web application using the Django REST framework in the stand. So right now, what is an API? So we see an API as a software intermediary that helps to connect two applications together. So these two applications simply represent the front end and the back end in the stand. So an API connects these two applications together in the stand. So I'm going to give you a simple example, a basic example right now. So let's assume you went to a restaurant. Understand? Let's assume you are this person here. You present the you you are you represent the front end application. Understand? So you went to a restaurant and you've been given a menu of a menu to pick your food, the food you want to pick. Understand? So you have this menu over here, and you've picked your food, the food you want to eat. Understand? But right there, you don't have access to the food. You don't have access to the food yet. The food is in the kitchen, you understand? So right here, you are the front-end application. And over here, this is the server, the database that has the item, that has the food you want. But to you over here, you don't have access to this kitchen. You don't have access to the kitchen, right? So what you're going to do, this is where an API comes in. And this, an API right here represents the waiter. The waiter connects you to the kitchen, you understand? So, Right, the waiter comes to you, he gets your request, he takes down your request down to the server and brings back a response to you. The response the waiter brings back to you is the food. You understand? So, right here, you are the front end application, you are the front end application. The kitchen is the back end, which is the server. And right here, the waiter is the API that connects you to the server. You understand? So, that's how API works in real life. You understand? So, one and if you check closely, API has a lot of benefits. It helps with security, you understand? So let's assume your friend has a mobile application and you have a database of items. So you have, or you, let's assume your friend has a mobile app for an e commerce website and you have a database of products. You can't just give your friend access to your database. That's not a good idea. What you have to do is this you have to like create an API. For your products and then give your friend access to the endpoint then your then your friend can then fetch data from your database using those endpoints that's the best practice in the stand because if you give you give your friend as you even give your friend access to your database he might misuse it you understand so to be on the safe side you have to just create api endpoint and then give this to your friend to use to fetch data from your api it's as simple as that, you understand? So right here, here's a here's a simple, here's one of the benefits of using an API, you understand? So the front end is never fully exposed to the server, and the server is never fully exposed to the front end, you understand? So what happens is this now. Instead, each of them communicates with small packets of data, sharing only what is necessary, you understand? Like right now, the front end simply needs food. This guy simply needs food, the city sharing what you need at that time you understand and the server simply gives what the front end wants you understand so that one that's one thing about apis they are not they don't they don't expose each other they don't expose their self to each other you understand so that's that's it over there so now what makes an api restful you've been hearing restful apis you've been hearing about apis but you don't really know what makes an api restful so an api is said to, an api is said to be restful if it supports the given http method you understand an api is restful if you can get item if you can create new item by posting if you can update and if you can delete you understand so if an api supports this method not just this method there are more than four you understand we have the patch method and we have some other methods you understand so if an API support this given HTTP method, that API is said to be RESTful, you understand? So I'm going to show you an illustration right here. You can see we have an, so you can see the first the first endpoint. Just before the just, just before the slash, we're going to have a domain. Let's say Amazon.com slash products. 
slash id to this sk you present the id so right at this point you understand so you can see we are trying to get an item if we can see we have an id you want to get an item due to this due to the id you understand so you can see the second endpoint we can either get all the items in this endpoint or we can post to this endpoint or we can create new items you understand so this endpoint does not have any id you can either get all the endpoints or we can post you understand so the third endpoint right here is used to update if i want to update a given product or you understand so the fourth endpoint is for partial updates this way is where if you want to update a particular field or an attribute you understand so let's assume you want to update the quantity of your product you are going to use the patch method because this is a kind of a partial update you understand and the last method is to delete items you understand so the other thing about apis right here you understand so apis are quite easy so we're starting the series where we're going to build a full restful api for an e-commerce web application you understand so we're going to cover jwt authentication also so it's going to be really really fun so if you've not subscribed to this channel why not subscribe now so you won't miss out on this tutorial it's going to be really really interesting and edu educative you understand so that's it right there so that's it right there so if you, if you want to learn django i have some books I recommend down below in the description of this video so check out those books and pick any one of your choice get them on amazon and start reading in a stand so that's it right here so you can show your boys some love support us on paypal patreon the links are down below so thank you and if you're into web hosting i recommend blue host they are super reliable and if you sign up with my link they're going to give you one year free domain name registration and also an SSL certificate for a year. So check that out, check out the host in a If you are freelancing or if you use WordPress, use my link to sign up on the host and start creating. So that's it for this video and get ready for the next video.